Hello, Dallas. Hello, everyone. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all my global viewers. Thank you so much for joining for today's live program. Welcome to my show, Global Gupshap. It's a nice news presentation. And I'm your host, Anu Benikati from Dallas, Texas, taking you all on a very exciting journey with me to meet extraordinary guests in every episode uh, on this show. So this March, that what we talked about, like we have been celebrating the Women's Day and a Women's Month because I think they all deserve to be recognized throughout the month. So I'm continuing throughout the March to recognize such women. Let's continue our journey of a hands that drops the cradle and meet more talented, inspirational, wise and successful women on Global Gapsha. So as we all know, um, you know, International Women's Day was celebrated first time or the 1911 for the very, very first time uh, and received an immensely overwhelming uh, response all over. So it is celebrated ever since globally with the great passion recognizing, you know, women. And uh, this day is uh, exclusively uh, dedicated to recognize every uh, woman and their contributions and honoring their achievements, promoting equality um, in all aspects of the society uh, throughout the world. And it is very, very uh, honorable event for all women who are going to be participating and knowing what's important. So, um, you know, today I have a very, I'm like, I'm very, very so excited today. I'll tell you why, because I'm going to meet my guest in a few minutes because she is a very special guest and she's beautiful, talented, um, you know, model, successful actress and an accomplished classical um, dancer and has fans all over the world. And uh, to tell you the truth, she rocked the Bollywood screen in her 80s and 90s with her charming smile in 80s and 90s, I should say, and uh, with her charming smile and flawless performance. Um, I have to say that because she's well recognized for her movies. Soon after I say that, you're going to know who that is, like Painter Babu as a Renu and Hero, Shensha, Jur, Ghail, Ghatpak, and you name it, and especially for Damini and more, more uh, movies that are really, really well recognized. And I would like to welcome, without a further ado, one and only the most wonderful Minakshi Sheshadri to the show today. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. And I am so, so, so pleased. And it's an honor to have you. Thank you so much for taking time to come on the Global Gup Shop. And all of our viewers are so excited to um, meet you and have you and have conversation. So we are celebrating Women's Day. And uh, I think today's show is going to be very different because we know you, your achievements and your accomplishments and, you know, everything about the screen and, you know, our your performance. But today I want to, you know, present you to our viewers as a woman, your views, and also, you know, like, what do you think about women and as a mother? So I think uh, this is going to be a very exciting show today because we're going to get a lot more personally, you know, involved in the show. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for it. Let's go. All on. right. I think challenge. That's because anyway, choose to challenge and that is probably going to be our challenge today. So um, this, you know, the hands that rock the cradle. So that's going to be our theme for Global Cup Shop and let's go ahead and rock it. Um, so let's start with the very um, beginning. So I want to know, let's talk about yourself. Like, you know, share a few of your very special, special childhood memories with us. You know, like, what is special for you? Well, uh, let's start with my very birth. <laughs> okay, <laughs> absolutely. I was born in this very small township called Sindri, Sindri, which was near the Bihar Bengal border. Okay. And the interesting part of this township was they had this fertilizer plant, the first plant in India started with American collaboration. Wow. So, People from all over India came there to work. So it was a very cosmopolitan small town. Mm -hmm. So we had Punjabis, Gujaratis, Maharashtrians, Malayali, you name it, everybody was there. Right. 
in that one small place. And uh, my life centered around being the apple of the eye of all these grown-ups there. Mm -hmm. They loved me as a little girl because I was very friendly, very naughty, <laughs> very bright. Right. And then uh, the other good special memories are all related with dance and music. Okay. My mom was my teacher, but I did not start learning from her from the very beginning. I started learning by myself. Oh, wow. Okay. I used to stand behind her students quietly mm -hmm. and copy their steps and try to perfect it all on my own. And my mom one day said, do you want to come into the front of the class to the front row and learn from me? Learn. Mm -hmm. I said, yes. And there was no looking back. Oh, wow. It was a very culturally rich home. My mother was involved with promoting dance, music, drama, mm -hmm. plays. And um, she was herself a tennis, table tennis champion and a role model for me. So that was my background. That's awesome. Um, I love to dance. My mother also wanted to teach me classical music, mm -hmm. which I learned, but I used to try and avoid it. I used to run away from the vocal lessons and my mother would wait patiently for me. I would say, I'll, I'll take a circle of our yard and then come back. And <laughs> I thought that she would get impatient and she would uh, stop teaching me, but nothing of the sort. So these are some of the special memories. That, that's very, very awesome. Because I know that, you know, like when we go back to those years, I think certain memories that, you know, we just have to recollect and then, you know, think about it so that, you know, how much we enjoyed them and what was so special about it. So what was your, like, you know, what do you miss the most of your, you know, like uh, school days, like elementary or middle school? Like what was your special memories and the, that you say that, oh my God, you know, I wish I could relive these days. Elementary school was in Sindri. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we were transferred to Delhi immediately after elementary school, I joined a big school in Delhi. And mm -hmm. I was so nervous <laughs> because there were all these big city kids who talked in such a posh way and uh, <laughs> dressed so you know well. And it, I was from a small town. And uh, I found it all very interesting and a little intimidating too. Right. But um, I really came into my own from middle school. Mm -hmm. um, the school I was in encouraged my dance talent and I went into a lot of talent contests. And uh, every year I would win the first prize. Wow. Till one year, the organizers requested my school principal that please don't let her participate. Nobody <laughs> else is getting a chance. Yes. The one who is actually grabbing every year. Yeah. <laughs> wow, and then with high school came other memories. Boys from our other boys' schools having a crush on me. Oh. <laughs> Why am I and not? I, I was so innocent. I would be like, ha, huh, what is this? Why, why are they behaving so silly? <laughs> then we used to bring storybooks to school, which we were not supposed to. Oh, yes. And then suddenly the seniors would come to a classroom to try and confiscate the books. And we would try to find places to hide them right. inside the curtain, um, uh, inside somebody's bag. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. And whenever my mom made dosa idli for me and I took it in my tiffin dabba to school, mm -hmm. you can rest assured that... That was gone in no time. It was gone in no time. I got no tiffin because the other kids Aww. just plundered it quietly. Right. Yeah, other good memories, making fun of teachers behind their back. There was one teacher who blinked a lot. There was one teacher who loved makeup. So we used to tease about them. And that was that was a lot of fun, a lot of innocence. Right, right. So, so, so also, I bet that you're sitting in the last bench and reading the storybooks and then not get caught. Right. So that was one of the favorites of all the students those days because that was the most entertaining thing to do because you're bored in the class. You already know everything. <laughs> <laughs> so when and you said that, you know, your mom already were your teacher. And so what is the the most sweetest memory that what like you always wanted to do with your mom? Like, you know, that you remember that I really enjoyed this one, you know, having as a mom and daughter connection. 
our mom and daughter connection was also highlighted by our teacher student relationship wow okay so a typical day for me would be going to school coming back having lunch taking rest getting up joining mommy's dance class even teaching the younger kids mm -hmm. and then some days i would have dance performances so mm -hmm. i would do my homework and then get ready for the dance show mom would do my hair and i would do my makeup by myself mm -hmm. and then we would go on stage and she would be sitting in the position of the teacher oh, i would go and bow, bow to her not only as my mother but as my teacher mm -hmm. so she was so loving and warm and demonstrative as a mother but as a teacher she was very strict <laughs> i was kind of scared of her you know wow. uh -huh. but we were truly like twin souls we were like friends and so you had like a tough love with that one to some extent <laughs> yes so. And then she was also a teacher in my school. She taught Hindi. Oh my goodness. Wow. So I remember during recess, uh, I would go and meet her in her room and we would have our tiffin together. And all the girls would make fun of me. Oh, she's mama's girl. <laughs> <laughs> Always, of course. Then, you know, it, really, it is noticeable. So, of course, those comments are normal, I guess, in any any schools. But... So that that is that is a very um, awesome thing that you shared because I know that it's a bonding between mom and daughter is always very special and extremely you know like you carry that one throughout your life because when you give the same kind of love to your daughter and then you always remember my mom used to say this and my mom used to do this like not even a single day that you spend without remembering such you know this awesome connection that you had and you always try to establish with your own you know kid also so. Um, Coming back to the uh, after the school, so which college did you go to? And also that, you know, the college memories, when you get into that one, I'm very sure that a lot of changes happen. And I believe that, that you know, you went into Delhi, right? The college. And so share some of those memories as well. Actually, I finished my high school in Delhi and immediately I moved to Bombay. Okay. So my education, college education was all in Mumbai. Okay. Wow. Um, uh, I did uh, external college, mm -hmm. which we call correspondence course. Okay, okay. Because I started working and it was mm -hmm. difficult for me to go for a regular college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I did a bachelor's in English literature. Wow. In a, in a women's college. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the college was in Churchgate. I lived in Bandra. Mm -hmm. It was a one hour train ride. And I would go by train and the local train. And the classes for external students were only on the weekends. And no one knew till I was in the third year as to what my work was and what I really was doing <laughs> with my time. So I used to be incognito, anonymous in the classes, just like any other student. Right. I loved that. OK, OK, so you enjoyed being like that. So not noticed yeah. all the time. And yeah, so, and then so I took a break from studies and came back to it after many years to do my master's okay. in ancient Indian culture. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of help from my parents because studying by myself was very hard for masters. Right. So right. they helped me research, prepare notes, studied with me in between my work, I would sit with them and uh, try to memorize things because in history you have to memorize a lot <laughs> so you know like you you accomplished very quickly and you already know so before that even you choose that career so did you have any idea like what you actually wanted to be like did you have any career goal that um, yes that you know like that that was like you are thinking about it so, oh, maybe I should become this or a doctor, engineer, lawyer, any of the other profession than this one. Have you ever thought about it? I, you know, Anu, always wanted to be a dancer. Oh, wow. Okay. A visual performing artist. It was in my blood. Mm -hmm. It came down to me from not just my mother, but from my grandparents okay. who loved the fine arts. And uh, I wanted to become a dancer but at the age of 17, after finishing school, when I joined movies, right. I ended up becoming an actress. But Indian actresses also do a lot of dancing. Dances, yes. yes. So I, though I did not uh, dance on stage, mm -hmm. my classical performances, mm -hmm. I danced uh, 
on the movie screen all of it yes and uh, ultimately what happened was mm-hmm. i was doing my ma mm-hmm. i was doing my acting mm-hmm. and i restarted my stage career again by doing classical performances on stage wow okay that was a really hectic part of my life i bet right yeah so i so my dream of becoming a dancer and performing uh, for large audiences became true mm-hmm. thanks to being an actress people were curious to see me on stage right and in a lot of the smaller places uh, in fact i have danced in karnataka in uh, bangalore in karwar wow uh, in uh, okay i forget the name name <laughs> but uh went to so many places and then got the love and appreciation of audiences okay. so they could see that i was not just a film performer but also a serious classical dancer yes 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 the other thing which i wanted to do uh mm-hmm. was to be a teacher oh, okay. especially with young children because i love working with children right right but uh, that that did not happen but it it happened in a small way when i started my dance institute in dallas yes yes you did so it. i got to teach uh, children dance yeah. and that was a very rewarding experience for me yes yes definitely and uh, i'm very sure that you are an awesome teacher as well and i hear a lot nothing but the positive outcome of that one from a lot of students so i'm very sure that you know you it 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 is in your blood because of your mom because you know she was a teacher so it's absolutely and um uh, so but, you know that uh, you i remember you telling me that you know everything what happened in your life like you know even the success is just you know it is an accident it just happened and i accepted it and moved on so take us through the journey of your success like starting from you know the memory lane of your the first crowning of your miss india and also uh, in 81 and then entering in japan they you know the international so just you know share some of those um stories with us yeah well apart from dancing in delhi i also got involved with modeling mm-hmm. so i took part in fashion shows ramp walking and especially the summer after my final exams i did a lot of that mm-hmm. and while i was waiting for my results to come out i was doing tailoring and shorthand typing courses <laughs> and then okay. we saw this ad in <laughs> Teams Weekly magazine that they were having this beauty contest uh, semi-finals in Delhi, mm-hmm. and I just decided to enter for a lark. I was like, I'm not going to get anything, but let's just have some fun. Right. And I won the Delhi contest, and I had to immediately go to Mumbai, and uh, um, getting ready for the performance on stage uh, f- for the contest. i was not at all nervous all the other girls were like staring at each other <laughs> who's doing what who's putting what makeup and right. i was like just uh, strolling around and joking <laughs> kidding because it was it was a normal for you so i think it was very normal for me <laughs> performing and going on stage was so easy for me right right and uh, finally when they decided on the winners uh, and they crowned me miss india my sister was in the audience uh, watching the show and she jumped up and she screamed to the neighbor sitting next to her that's my sister that's my sister cool that that's a big deal of course yeah. it's definitely so you know what yeah. I mean. and then of course there were publicity interviews and uh, i was noticed by manoj kumar and i got a film offer mm-hmm. so that is pretty much uh, going uh, down memory lane about my miss india contest So so after that you also went to Japan uh, I believe right so from there to represent India is that is that true right Yes I went to Japan for the contest called Miss International Mhm mm-hmm. and uh, I visited about four cities in Japan met girls from 80 odd countries Wow and mm-hmm. it was such an amazing experience and uh, we had all those you know three round swimsuit evening gown national costume right right and then a uh, question is asked and you have to answer mhm uh, it was a lot of fun it was a learning experience and it opened my eyes and mm-hmm. after that i knew i wanted to travel also travel right 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 
so so after that one when was that realization that okay so not just the dance not just this one so i want to like what i would like to do or something like did you even at that time also thinking that you know is there any other possibility that i want to become a dancer or just an actress look like, so when you got an offer from the first time so that is it so that you said like okay i want to give it a try and see how it goes or you're like yeah this is it that i'm entering this one and i'm i'm going with it so when was that realization happened to you no the realization that i want to do movies mm-hmm. happened almost as soon as i got the film offer mm-hmm. okay i uh, talked to my parents they were very uh, cautious about it they were leery that you know this profession is not the best for a young innocent girl <laughs> um, so i just said just one movie please just one movie, <laughs> one movie. i like, want to know what movie making is about and the offer is coming to me by itself i never thought of becoming an actress and uh, so they said okay two things you have to follow one thing you have to continue study okay oh yes absolutely. and the other thing is you need to have a chaperone with you all the time a family <laughs> member you're not going to go anywhere alone right right and i was totally fine with all that and uh, moreover manoj kumar had said that he didn't need to take my screen test wow yeah so oh, i said yeah. yeah the only <laughs> thing he said is you need to put on weight <laughs> and he also said he would arrange acting classes mm-hmm. so i knew this is it uh, i'm going to do one movie for sure right and it'll become a full time career that i did not know till my second film hero oh wow that's so like because i know that like even today those are the movies that we the moment that we remember that you know everything just is a so fresh in our memories like not just us like in throughout the world like people remember you know even i, I bet that you know like they even remember your name of you know the the role that you played in those movies it is that you know well known to all the people so you know and going <clears throat> going back to this and um you know you are very accomplished and we were just talking about the dance and everything and so it is it i mean you're the most well known individual in the art of dance when it comes to the expertise and you know like all four forms of dance as a matter of fact which is very unique extremely difficult and you accomplished in that so what does that mean to you in your life like you know how do how do you connect it uh, to life like what does it mean to you I think it's my inner spark of what makes me tick mm-hmm. what makes me myself mm-hmm. my passion and love for dance especially during the years when I was an active learner mm-hmm. I learned I was like a sponge I absorbed and I retained and I just no bones in the body right yes and uh, the thing with the learning the four styles was it mm-hmm. all coincided with my growing up starting from a young child till my teenage adolescent years mm-hmm. each style helped me at different stages of my life to formulate my personality mm-hmm. to come to terms with maturity right um for example mm-hmm. bharatnatyam gave me discipline and structure wow as a young kid mm-hmm. then i learned kathak mm-hmm. which gave me the fast pirouettes and f- fast footwork Right. which appealed to me as a you know 11 year old going into her teens and then i did kuchipudi and the flamboyance of uh, kuchipudi was uh, was part of the excitement of uh, teenage years right. and then finally i mellowed down and i settled down to learn odissi mm-hmm. which is all about womanhood and true maturity peace and so that is what happened Right. and uh, the desire to excel in different dance forms that i loved i was because i wanted to share the magic with audiences right. for an artist there is nothing more rewarding than having having an audience who will appreciate your art right yes yes absolutely so you know like with learning So do you do you connect any common thing in all four dances like in all four forms i'm very sure it has its own specificity and also the uh uniqueness but at the same time 
is it something that you know like it connects to your heart and soul that all forms of all four forms of dances that like oh yes this is what actually connect me no matter what kind of a dance that i do well um, knowing four styles mm-hmm. and i'm I have actively performed in three of them mm-hmm. has made me a stickler for detail <laughs> okay i i'm very a, a kind of a nitpicker and uh, Uh, i had to absorb the essence of each style mm-hmm. understand how to keep each style separate from each other when i did one style it had to look like that was perfectly rendered as if that was the only style i knew mm-hmm. and practiced right and i learned to specialize and multitask at the right. same time <laughs> and this this body i mm-hmm. learned to fine tune this instrument Correct. to handle different pressures and challenges so all that training mm-hmm. is standing me in good stead even today wow wow so so it's, it's it, i mean it, like you mentioned this is the discipline this is something that we learn from that one form of dance yeah. to the another form so which is and i must also add that indian classical arts are all very spiritual right so connecting to the spirit in not one but more than one dance style mm-hmm. and in also classical music which i learned vocal mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. is something special it, it transforms the whole energy of the body correct and connects to some higher ideal right 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 so the you know the four styles that you always uh, you know the performed and then it it represented something in everyday life as well to connect you uh, to the life like whether you like what you said you know it made your body so you know well kept and disciplined and all that so some of those forms some of those style that that has a different one like you know to express your facial expression or any kind of thing so you know those are ones that what we do every day and then we don't even know about it so that how do you connect those deeply you know to uh, make that okay this is something that is not you know like something new that is already existed we just gave that one into a very special form they say art reflects reality okay so definitely things which we see in our daily life are part of uh, dance mm-hmm. in dance we tell stories which happen in real life we talk about uh, the the yearning for the divine and that is there in all around us everybody is yearning for the higher spirit and to right. connect with something beyond themselves and, and to understand their entire potential as human beings yes so dance definitely shows all this which already exists mm-hmm. but it just expresses it itself in a stylized form correct 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 so so you know like um since we are celebrating women's day that let me ask you also this one you know like women is a symbol of so many things she knows how to wear a different hat still be successful and also be a you know un- give unconditional love regardless of what uh you know forms or what kind of a hat that she wears and she does it with heart and soul so what do you think the woman so th- that is one thing that's very unique about like according to you with your experience or what you know with your view that what do you think that like woman has something that's very unique about well i'll say something which everybody knows okay nothing new that i'm going to say mm-hmm. motherhood and the ability to nurture a child okay both within themselves for 9 months wow and without themselves for the rest of their lives right right wow and the f- fact that they can be super tender and loving on one hand mm-hmm. and become bhadra kali on the other <laughs> hand right you know you, you don't want to cross a woman yes especially so I, i think these are the unique things <laughs> about women yes 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 it it is it is definitely something that we we have to look at like you know so what do you think about like you know um it is very rare that some some women are very talented but 
like there are so many things that we don't see them it is hidden it is something that that we don't know because sometimes whether it is nurtured it is not nurtured do you think that kind of a thing is still exists that and also even after encouraging you know from 1911 to what percent do you think that you know that kind of a um, you know like a restriction is still hindering from her growth well you're talking about whether we have a preferential treatment yes. towards men yes whether gender equality exists or yes. not yes. that is one of them yes and if women get the importance and the credit that they deserve yeah i mean also it is like you know if you if you for, let me let me tell you like you know so if you whether you enter a corporate world or whether you enter a entertainment any of that so this competition exists it doesn't have to be just a gender equality for men sometimes you know uh, it is also between a woman and a woman so that kind of a thing also exists so that kind of thing that like really really holds her back because of the personality or the way that they grow up so for that uh, that i was wondering whether you know like is, is this really something that we need to come over it or just address it like how do you uh, you know get over the such kind of a thing and just still uh, make her go and like yes you can do it i think each human has a right to live with dignity Mm -hmm. recognizing their full potential okay. so definitely women deserve that as men do right absolutely <laughs> and uh, there are many things which are hindering that one of which is the traditional concept that the male is the dominating person in the relationship right and the other is that there is competition nowadays and so it's not just competition between men and women as you mentioned it's between women themselves too mm -hmm. right but uh i feel that women by far and large do tend to support each other okay in fact that is why that women are getting uh, ahead and doing <laughs> yes. well is because they're supported by other women yes yes it's 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 so true it's so true because you know we experience that one and it's rare but it's still to some percentage that it still exists and i hope you know we all will definitely get over that one and you know you have um, you know acted in many very very well known roles portrayed many you know like a very impressive um roles of a women so do you think that you also have faced such difference when you were acting, you know, to some extent, or like, you know, did you stand up for yourself or like, how did you feel about that? I think in the movie business, what works the most is success. Okay. Yes. So whether it is a man or a woman, okay. if people recognize their talent right. and if they have commercial success at the box office, then things become much more easy. Okay. There are many talented people who did not find commercial success and they could not get the opportunities they deserved. Right. So it's not so much a gender thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's more a question of uh, being in the news because of your uh, success or not. So you're saying that commercial success is the key and everything else follows. Yes, of course, you have to have talent and ability. Right. Most certainly. Right. But you also need the right breaks. Mm -hmm. Oh, I must say this to you. OK. Um, my dad would quote this. He would say success is A, B, C. A is for ability, which is your skills, your talent, mm -hmm. your inner potential. B is for breaks, which is the right opportunities, okay. the right door opening at the right time. Correct. Yes, absolutely. And C is for courage, oh. courage of your convictions to face challenges. Wow. 
So um, I think this sums up what people have to see in success almost anywhere, not just in the movie business. That that makes so much sense. Like, you know, you know your ABCs. That's that's what it means. Like, you know, if you want to like, climb the ladder of success, then yes, know your ABCs. That makes so much sense. So I think I think we all should remember those. That that's a wonderful way of, you know, saying or giving conveying the message to a child. So uh, thanks for sharing that. And so like, yeah, also I should ask, like, you have played so many roles. I have to ask you this one amongst all, which one is your very favorite one that you said that I really am so glad that I got this opportunity to play this role and it is completely satisfactory for me. Is there anything? Yeah, in my career of 80 odd movies, mm -hmm. there have been about 10 movies which really stand out. Mm -hmm. But the one movie which is loved and cherished by me and by audiences and fans and friends is Damini. Yes. Um, Damini had many uh, specialities about it. Mm -hmm. Firstly, it was woman oriented. The, the story was about Damini mm -hmm. and it followed her and she had the major part in the story. Right. Then it was also a very well fleshed out role. Mm -hmm. the, the writer and directors had worked so well on the script and the roles. Mm -hmm. uh, not only Damini's role, the roles of other characters in the movie also were very well edged out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the, the theme of Damini, mm -hmm. where it says that there is nothing bigger than the court of conscience. Right. It is bigger than the court of justice. Yes, yes. So this movie was very empowering for women in the audience and for me. Mm -hmm. It was a challenging performance for me. There are several highlights in the movie, but the one which stands out for me is the Tandav dance. Right, right. Yes, yes. That is, I mean, even like, it, it is so natural and it is so powerful and it just, you know, makes your hair stand up, like just watching them, you know, and the music, everything is so perfect. It's you know, extremely well made. And you have really, really done your, you know, wonderful you know the 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 justice to that role that uh, especially that dance so yes uh, completely agree with you so you know um and also the uh, i have to ask you like as you went by so there must be some very uh, you know the favorite or maybe i should not say favorite but someone that you said like, okay these are the people who are my mentors they made a difference in my life so do you have someone that you actually got a guidelines mentorship and also like direction that you should should not do some of those people that you want to share with definitely my parents mm -hmm. my father gave me love for language especially english mm -hmm. he was always quoting things writing things whenever i needed help with school essays i would ask him to help me <laughs> <It's very old. laughs> uh, and uh uh, today, I think my vocabulary in English is good because of the word games that he and I used to play. Oh, wow. That, oh, okay. So, so, so. so. Then uh, my mom is a key person in my life. She made me what I am. She gave me training, both personal and professional. Mm -hmm. She was an awesome role model. Wow. I don't think I can ever <laughs> match up to her, but... I did my own thing. Uh, she did not get to perform because her life story was not, you know, conducive to performance. Mm -hmm. But um, she had the satisfaction of me seeing me doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, Manoj Kumar, who introduced me, gave me a very good piece of advice. Mm -hmm. He said, when you go to a cinema theater, Right. You see all the flyers and the posters put up there. The They're of people who are in the news now and whose movies are showing now. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, these posters will come down and there will be some other faces. Correct. Nothing is permanent. Mm -hmm. So be in this world, which is the film world and the regular world, mm -hmm. but don't be of it. 
Right. Stay untouched. Right. right. Because that is ephemeral, temporary, and uh, not worth holding on to. Right. Right. Just do your best and leave the rest to circumstances. Uh, my husband Harish is a big uh, inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. He's very multifaceted, uh, extremely capable. He has been my rock of Gibraltar through good and bad times. Absolutely. There are a lot of other people I like, actresses, writers. Mm -hmm. It's a very long list. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think they all deserve it because, you know, every step of the way that, you know, some one or the other way that they always come in step in give us the right advice and guide us into a right direction at that time that we probably don't realize it but definitely as we go yeah and you know something there was this uh, article which i read about who is a guru mm -hmm. and okay. there are lots of different uh, things that we won't even think of like a snake is a guru a rock is a guru really and it, it explained why. Okay. And I think this is from traditional scriptures or it, it is from the Swamiji who wrote it down. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But um, so you find uh, inspiration and mentors wherever you look. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's very interesting. Like, you know, I wonder how the snake is going to be guru in, in some way. Probably that, mm -hmm. you know, it is probably... Yeah, I wish I had that with me. No, I, I could explain it better. That's absolutely okay. Because, you know, I, I think uh, um, some of the things about that, what you just said, like what I read was uh, the snake can be, you know, like be very nice to people, not bite, but does not mean that it doesn't have to hiss because to protect themselves, they have to do that, but it does not mean that they have to harm. So, you know, some of those kind of things that we have to do in our lives sometimes. Um, you know, so such things can exist, and it's a very. I mean, you know, if if we ever like our or our audience might just you know, um, whoever just you know hear that maybe they might just share us later in this one. So there is another very very um, closer to you to your heart question that I have to ask you. So you, I know, and I know you well. So this is like you are an excellent mom you are like a fantastic mom that you just you know like guide them like you're always there for your children so how does it feel that you know you have already like you know you have given up and so do you ever go back and look at it and and have a second thoughts about it i didn't completely understand so you know like for your children that you actually did not continue the career and you said like you know you i i want to commit completely to my children so have you ever thought about it second thoughts like oh i wish you know maybe i should have done or something you know like just a distraction that went through your mind no not at all i've, I've wanted to witness every part of their growing up mm -hmm. and it, there is nothing more uh, fulfilling no. that i have found for myself Right. than parenting and being there for my kids. Wow. And uh, here's another quote my father would always okay. say. He would say, there are two things mm -hmm. that a parent can give mm -hmm. the children. Mm -hmm. The two things are mm -hmm. roots okay. and wings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... My family gave me roots and they gave me wings. I took off and did a movie career. I took off and moved to America. Mm -hmm. They let me go and allowed me to find myself. Right. So I wanted to do the same for my kids, but giving them roots took years, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> well, I think I think the similar question is about, you know, asking... Um, asked by my colleague, I think she's asking, so how hard it is, like, wasn't it too hard for you to move from such a thousand miles away from, you know, where you actually established your career, everything, like, you know, that decision, how hard was it to make that decision immediately? 
I knew I wanted to be where my husband was. Okay. He tried to come to India for my sake, but it did <laughs> not work out. Okay. And I tried to continue acting even after marriage. I did a couple films. Mm-hmm. But it was hard to make a marriage work uh, transcontinental. Right, right. I mean, we, we were both capable of doing it, but, you know, once we planned children, mm-hmm. then it did not make sense to be living apart. I agree. So. It was very hard to manage with that. And then, and also it is not practical anyway. So I think most of us have experienced that one. And I think we all know that, you know, how difficult it is to maintain the long term, you know, distanced relationship. Yes. Well, I think it's very courageous and hats off to you for doing that. And I know that in you, I don't think you have ever looked back and I think you're still successful and you have done so many of these. And so what is your, um, you know, what is one thing that you enjoy in your free time? And what is your favorite food that you actually want to have as a snack or something like that? In my free time, I love to exercise. I'm a fan of power walking and yoga and uh, um, aerobics. And of course, dance. Mm -hmm. You still continue to dance and you still rehearse and you still... Yeah, for myself, I do it for myself because Mm -hmm. I'm not performing now. Mm -hmm. But I hope to get back to performing and back to stage and maybe back to the screen also. Right. So that is in the plans now because my son is going to go into college. Correct. So now he doesn't really need me anymore. (laughs) Or or maybe he needs me, but not in the way that it was all these years. Yes, 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 definitely. So. And you asked me what my favorite food is. Yes. I'm a South Indian, so I love Thayari Shadam with Urgai. Oh. which is yogurt rice with pickle pickle right 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 but i eat all kinds of food uh, mm-hmm. i i love vegetables yes you know the most i mean known fact about curd rice is i think it is <clears throat> exist it existed only in indian food because after everything that we keep that at the last because it kind of you know, I think activates um, the chemicals that gives you a satisfaction of the food at the end of the meal. That's the reason uh, the yogurt rice is very popular in meals. At the end of the meal that, you know, you must have a very tight, even for two spoons that people do eat curd rice. I think that's what I read and I heard. And I think that's why it is very favorite with a lot of people. So, (laughs) and uh, so, um, well, I think uh, this is this is a very much fun that, you know, you shared so much about and I really am enjoying it. I don't know how time passed by, but at the same time, I want you to uh, give a message to all of our young, you know, women or even career women you know, and, and just a, you know, inspirational message or your uh, advice to them. I would say that Work Mm -hmm. is something which nobody can take away from you. Mm -hmm. People can take away your health. You can lose your health, your success, your uh, wealth. Um, All these things can go away from you, but your Mm -hmm. work is your alone. Mm -hmm. So concentrate on your work, doing it to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. Be proud of yourself. Take care of others in your life, but do take care of yourself first. And um, whatever treasures you have, talents you have, uh, cherish them and strike out boldly in life. If if I give an example from my life, uh, I would like you to take away this thought. Um, Appreciate your talents and utilize them Mm -hmm. because that is what I have done. I have appreciated my talents and utilized them. And that has given me true satisfaction and success. Mm -hmm. And if you feel you're too old or it's too late to follow your dreams, that is not true. You can reclaim your space even now. Mm -hmm. 
See, following a career in movies, I took a break for almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. And now I'm ready to come out of my self-inflicted sabbatical mm -hmm. and take the chances that life is offering me now. How so come on, come on, take a yes. chance on yes. life. Take a chance on life. Right. Absolutely. I agree. Hundred percent. Yes. That's 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 that is the spirit. Yes. Well, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for an awesome, awesome, you know, um, evening, lovely evening. Thank you so much for spending time with us and be with us and give your, you know, all about you. And uh, we get we get to know you well today. Um, and uh, just, you know, not as on the screen, like, you know, off the screen as well as a mom, as a, you know, like yourself. And uh, this is really a pleasure knowing so many of this exciting thing about um, you and uh, really, really enjoyed having you uh, today in the show. Well, um, folks, uh, I hope uh, you all, whoever are watching, and I hope you enjoyed the evening and had a great fun as well. And uh, um, and uh, don't forget to join us again this uh, uh, 17th and uh, meet another inspiring uh, woman who is actually wearing a um, hat to bring the justice, Sheriff Brown. She's going to be with us also this Wednesday. And don't forget to tune in. So stay cool, stay connected, and don't forget to tune in on our Global Gup Shop. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Meenakshi Ji. So it's really a pleasure having you. And uh, see you soon again, probably for another Women's Day and with uh, even more inspirational and uh, more news. And uh, till then, everyone, take care and bye now. Thank you. <laughs>